welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode number 10. 10. 10, one, zero. Um, by the way, as you might notice, I'm wearing a mask today because mm-hmm. I'm just recovering from a flu. And um, I don't think I've ever even gotten the flu, like ever in my in entire your life. life. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I'm lucky. I don't know. <laughs> I think I've had one maybe when I was in high school. I don't have fever anymore, so I'm safe to start doing things like this. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still not hanging around people, but, you know, I'm wearing a mask now. Mm-hmm. But sh- um, yeah, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about the episode, uh, this in this episode, about... Um, I can share some natural flu remedies, how to get well mm, better. That's a good idea. And then also, um, we're going to talk about marketing your business and uh, little different avenues, how you can um, grow faster. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, marketing money is never a wasted money. Even if the marketing doesn't work, you learn what not to do so there's always um an upside to spending money on marketing Mm -hmm. um yeah so wealth and wellness and uh we can start a little bit with the wellness part yeah so i found myself on tuesday afternoon uh feeling pretty under the weather that's pretty off. bad. Yeah. yeah, and then my fever started rising. And that's a telltale sign when, mm-hmm. like, all the symptoms hit you really quick at once. Mm-hmm. That's usually what the flu is. So day one to three, you can expect high fever. Day four to five, less to no fever on five on day four and five. And then six, seven, hopefully no more um no more much symptoms except maybe some dryness in your throat maybe some cough Mm -hmm. maybe some sneezing and i think a lot of times too especially now because we're you know in the middle of a cold snap the dry throat coughing dry air yeah yeah. dry air it's just it's so dry especially with you know artificial heating in, in your house it's really dry too which doesn't help either it suspends the flu particles in the air so Mm. it's easier to catch it yeah Yeah. if someone like sneezes it up and then you walk by you might inhale that stuff when you go into some buildings and it's like you can tell it's just the air is so stale too it's like there's not good air circulation sometimes and yeah but also humidity Mm -hmm. you know so one tip is to uh, get a humidifier you know Mm. if you don't mm-hmm. have a flu yet like in the office you might have a little humidifier on your desk because what happens moisture catches on those little molecules of the virus in the air and it brings it down to the floor hmm. so that way it won't attach in your nose or throat because that's how we get sick the little mm-hmm. droplets have to reach into like the same washing your hands right. and touching your face you know you can infect yourself so it's important to wash your hands yeah always <laughs> wash your hands yeah but especially <laughs> during yeah. like dry seasons because those yeah. viruses tend to stick around more yeah and one thing that I, you know i don't know if i've ever gotten the flu before i hope i don't <laughs> get it but one thing that i've always thought of is you know there's typically kind of like a, a week or two of the year where uh, it's pretty heavy flu people a lot of people are sick and during that time i even though i like to go out to dinner and, and get food um you know sometimes i try to avoid going out to dinner during those times because you know a lot of people are going out to dinner they might be sick or you know well people shouldn't yeah. be going they shouldn't. until they're 100 yeah. percent. i mean you can still have um i mean you're more contagious only those one to three to four days days, but even some people day seven could still yeah so that's why i'm still wearing a mask yeah Yeah. well and it's important to um you know i remember the first time i went to asia that i i saw people walking around with masks and this was years before covid years and i was like oh that's kind of weird i wonder why they have masks and i asked a colleague and they said you know the reason that people wear masks 
is because they're sick, so they don't want to get other people sick. So I'm glad that that has kind of caught on now in the United States as one of the things after COVID. Well, and this is brilliant, Matt. So <laughs> yeah. This is not just any mask. It's it's, it's not just any mask. It's also advertising. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Can't help too much advertising yeah. for your business. Yeah. You know? And, uh, you know, we were at an event a couple of days ago and uh, we were talking with a construction company and we're like, you know, how much is it to wrap a bus? Like, you know, they have their logo on uh, one of the city buses here in Vermont. And it was kind of, you know, interesting. It was it was actually less than I thought, but it was interesting. $20,000. Yeah. You, wonder. you know, for a year. Um, but it was funny because it you see that bus all over and it's just that brand recognition you know mm -hmm. very important mm -hmm. so the other things um i've learned so if you if you have flu um when you have very high fever let's say you can go to like 102 100 even four mm -hmm. um you want once you get to 102 you wanna you can use like ibuprofen or other medications to reduce it because that much high fever is not great. But if you only have like 100, 101, you might still kind of float on that because that can actually help your body to fight mm. off and yeah. heal faster. Mm -hmm. um, and then drinking a lot of teas, you know, staying hydrated yeah. and water and eating health, not eating too much, not too heavy because your body needs to you know get well honey lemon yeah the one thing that oh. i wanted to mention just for myself with tea is there has been a couple of times i've just you know had a cold and i've actually found some teas to kind of aggravate my my throat and actually make me cough a little bit more so it, oh no you know i think just maybe a, you know tr seeing what works for you but what i've always found is i particularly don't like mint flavored teas or you, you know, don't like peppermint yeah peppermint or mint flavored um you know food like uh like ice cream you know or anything like that but i found that if i am feeling under the weather it's like i you know the mint tea is the best it kind of cuts through whatever that is in the menthol yeah kind of in your throat and then you know having some maybe a little honey in it or even some maple syrup to help kind of just like relax it a little bit too. well you Soothe can it. have mm -hmm. um throat coat and yeah. there's many different teas like from yogi brand i mm -hmm. believe that are really good and i found this amazing um actually to help with coughing like i don't like to take any bad um like I don't like to take drugs or medicines that have any bad ingredients in them mm -hmm. unless I really have to like you know ibuprofen yeah you have to take that which mm -hmm. you know with caution not overdose it you'll be fine but I'm talking like you know artificial dyes and colors because it's you know even like some cough drop little those candy things have like coloring yeah, in them lot, like yeah. blue red 40 red dye, and yeah, like number 40. I don't want to be having this i'm sick and i'm using this like so i you know make sure like he went and got um the a healthy living we have store here that have natural it's kind of like a whole f uh, smaller whole foods for yeah. people listening that might and not it be has, familiar with that yeah, yeah so you want to read ingredients you know on that stuff because mm -hmm. it's important you know i think so um, and it worked so much better than that stuff that had that bad stuff. This yeah, and the thing that I'll stuff. say is, um, you know, I think it was like a Halls or something was what, you know, we happened to have in the cabinet. And, I, you know, I bought that, I don't know. That wasn't Halls. This was some sort of assured like a dollar store. Oh, or it was, I, maybe I bought it like when I was on the road or something. Yeah. But, you know, I... I think it was like a couple bucks, you know. And it's like a dollar store thing. Yeah, yeah. but... Um, but anyways, you know, it was it was like a, a dollar, two dollars, maybe or like something. a drug yeah. store. Thing. And yeah. when I went to Healthy Living, I was like, huh, I wonder how much like these natural. And it was like three bucks, four it's bucks. It's not that much. And more. it happened to be on sale, so it was like a dollar up. I think maybe just because of the season, you know, it's kind of like flu season. Um, but you know, it came out to like three bucks or whatever, which 
you know, it's, it's not much to begin with, but it really wasn't that much more no. than just the, the generic. It's and it's one. organic, too. Yeah. And, and, you know, I haven't actually tried those um, yet, but like you said, it, it sounded like it worked a lot better. I than mean, the, it literally like took away my throat pain. I was yeah. able to sleep. It, it worked so much better. Yeah. Um, and then at Costco, I so I used like Instacart and I, I didn't even know that Instacart you could do it with Costco. Yeah, <laughs> that funny. was like the only kind of store that was like close by. Yeah. And um, I'm like, OK, well, let me try to order from there. And um, so I was looking, you know, what like cough? I wanted to get like cough syrup because I was kind of coughing a lot. Um, then and um, like gosh like every single thing yeah. they had in there had like these additives that I didn't want so like yeah, it's pretty bad when yeah. you start looking at what's in it yeah but I found this like kids medicine mm, like ages 2 to 12 I'm like I'm I'm 35 You're going close enough. on 36 <laughs> but it had honey yeah and it had all the natural herbs so I'm like yeah. well if it's good for kids you yeah know? and I got that one and that worked amazing yeah. too they took away my cough yeah that's good because you know whenever I've been sick it's sometimes I look at taking you know medicine if it's like a antihistamine or ibuprofen or or, or, or whatever it's it's not so much that I know that that's going to really help like cure it like you know that it doesn't cure the cold but it at least gives your body a little bit of time to to rest and but does it make you feel so crappy? yeah well you know I would say okay I'm gonna take like an antihistamine you know like a half an hour 45 minutes before bed so then I know I won't be like coughing and sneezing and I'll actually be able to sleep yeah and that's actually the more valuable part than taking mm -hmm. you know the the pharmaceuticals be so that your body can rest yeah and then you know you take that and you know you're probably still going to get like an okay night's sleep because you know you're still sick but then at least then you wake up in the morning you're like all right i got it like a decent night's sleep you know i wasn't like tossing and turning because i think it was maybe a couple months because your headache might be so bad that you might not be able to sleep and yeah. then you won't be able to get better well and a couple months ago i had you know some sort of head cold and i got really bad body aches and it was it was difficult to sleep because I couldn't really lay on my back because then my back would hurt and like on my side, my like leg would hurt. And I'm like, <laughs> no matter what position I get into to try to sleep, to try to get some rest, like I was just so achy. And luckily that only lasted a day or so. But, you know, that one night I got really poor. It was like a cold. Yeah, yeah, it was a bad yeah. cold. And I got, you know, poor sleep one night. And then it was just like the next day I was just dragging, you know, and it felt my head was killing me. And. Um, the other thing too is, um, I don't know for you, but like when I'm sick, a lot of times just like to help me go to sleep, an ice pack on my forehead, even if I don't have a headache, just, you know, kind of helps you zone out a mm. little bit. Um, yeah. yeah. And then taking a hot steamy shower yeah, those that are the best. steam moisture mm -hmm. or like boiling up some hot water and like breathing in the mm -hmm. steam that can help too yeah i've when i was a, a kid what we would do is you know you kind of fill up the bathroom sink you know f plug it put some like you know run some hot water and kind of put your head over it with a towel over it and kind of get in some of that make a little steam room yeah exactly <laughs> you know yeah. and it's like sometimes when you're sick it's like the it's like oh man i just want to go to the gym go into the steam room or go into the hot tub and it's maybe you know obviously you don't want to do that because you, you get other people sick but at the same time you know sometimes that can exacerbate what you have just because you know you're going into a, a public pool public gym kind of thing that you know you might actually that's too much you know yeah. catch something else you know because your immune system is already a little bit fighting off of well something. you shouldn't because then you might get other people yeah sick. totally and that's the biggest thing is please don't do that yeah if you're sick and that's how i probably got sick or someone yeah like well and you know if you're sick you know sometimes you have to go like you know i was feeling okay so i could you know run around and get some stuff for yolita but you know if if you're sick and you know you have to go to the to the store to get something no, use instacart yeah i guess you can use instacart but you know at least try to use a mask or you know when yeah. you do go out so you know go out get what you need to do and 
um, especially now with a lot of this like curbside pickup or curbside delivery, it's, it's actually pretty convenient. You know, kind of select what you want. You can just quickly run into the store and, and grab it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the other thing that's um, good is garlic and ginger. Mm-hmm. So honey is natural, soothing for your throat, helps immune system. Garlic actually is able to kill viruses and bacteria too. So you want to crush up garlic and mix it with honey, add some cayenne pepper, because that will give you that kind of heat too. Mm. Um, Ginger, it doesn't taste very good, but you can add more honey to mask, you know. Well, and sometimes when you're sick, you, your taste buds are kind of a little wacky anyway, so maybe you don't really taste it. <laughs> yeah, but but those are really um, good remedies, you know. And then, like I said, you want to rest too, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't go out, don't walk. Um, well, I, I, you know, I much. was saying, yeah, I mean, I was saying for Yolita because, you know, she was just kind of hanging out at the house. It was like, you know, maybe you want to go out and just at least stand outside and get some fresh air. And well, I personally yeah. think when I'm sick, you know, obviously you don't want to go and exercise outside. But, you know, just going and doing like a slow walk around the block or just kind of hanging outside. But I don't know if you ever had flu. Yeah, no, I don't think honestly, I don't think I've ever had the flu um, before. Trust yeah. me, like you, you don't feel go. like yeah. getting up, <laughs> yeah. you know, because you're so uh, exhausted. It's like you did like a marathon, ultra marathon, right. you know, mm-hmm. just like yeah. it you, just like your whole body. Mm-hmm is so it's fighting it's right. really there's a lot going on that you don't have energy for anything else not even like taking a shower feels like it's like the biggest chore yeah you know? yeah yeah it's really hard but mm-hmm. once you get better yeah and i think too it's important to mention to people listening is you know if after a day or two you know you're just getting worse and worse and worse then it's really time to to go to like a walk in care mm-hmm. or call your doctor. Yeah. And that's kind of what I've always thought when, you know, I get sick or with something is, you know, give it a couple of days, you know, kind of take it easy, see what happens. You know, it doesn't hurt to call your doctor. Um, but, you know, if you're not feeling any better, then it's time to time to go into the doctor's office. For sure, because mm-hmm. you could be like if your fever didn't come down in mm-hmm. like three to four days, or it keeps going up then you might have a secondary infection like pneumonia yeah sometimes flu can develop into like other things yeah well especially if you already you know some people are in you know immunize immune immunocompromised there we go (laughs) yeah but share in the comments below if you have any of your own tips Mm -hmm of you know staying well and uh getting well faster natural remedies we all for that stuff mm-hmm. and yeah so on the other part of the our podcast today uh we can also talk a little bit so the way um i was thinking about marketing now this topic came about because as we progress with um, our brilliant massage and skin franchise um, development. You know, now we have to make a decision, like when and how and what marketing we need to mm-hmm. deploy. Um, so for sure, you know, we are going to be doing Facebook and Google ads. We just um, ready to put out. We're all done with our landing page, and then mm-hmm. once that's live we can ads gonna be live so no online marketing is the easiest way to get known and easiest way to um spend less least amount of time in marketing because Mm -hmm. you can hire that out easily so you can never go wrong with that type of marketing just make sure you hire someone that knows what they're doing and then you make sure you explain your goals you know Mm -hmm. and objectives and what your business is all about yeah um the other types of marketing is like in-person marketing like expos events networking events local organizations yeah um 
YouTube po- podcasts, actually, yeah. you know. Um, well, and one thing I just want to mention is the in-person um, advertising and the networking, because that has been helpful for myself, is, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do IT consulting. Um, you know, there's probably, I was going to say thousands, there's probably a lot hundreds of, of thousands. Have Technology, you know, yeah. um, but one of the things that it really comes down to is that customer service at the end of the day. And uh, sometimes I say with IT consulting, you know, it's 80 percent mm-hmm. customer service, 20 percent actually knowing how to to, to administer and, and do the technology. And that's where you can really form those relationships is if you can meet a decision maker mm-hmm. at an event. Maybe you have some commonalities that you can just kind of chit chat about at the event because you're both at the same event. Um, You know, I personally like watches. um, So it's a very easy icebreaker to go up to someone else and say, hey, well, you know, like nice watch. Like, you know, because most people that are wearing watches are usually into the watches. But then that's where you can actually sell yourself, too, and then sell your businesses. They know who they're working with and who they're going to be interacting with. And for a lot of businesses, that's a very key part, especially when it comes to technology, is being able to, to trust and you know easily communicate with um, your provider. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, um, online marketing is mm-hmm. bread and butter, yeah. but there's nothing better than putting a face to a business and right. actually meeting the owner and mm-hmm. knowing what they're all about and, you know, it's 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 limited how much you can do of it obviously you can't scale yourself to go to every single event and meet you know every prospective client so it's it's more limited but like when you can do those things it's definitely like you build a stronger relationship with the yeah and those leads that you get or like expos right yeah from like in person are typically more valuable leads too i think they can trust you more you know meeting in person Mm -hmm. than just finding someone online because there's hundreds of providers online and they don't know are you a scam like how do i trust you like Mm -hmm. are you gonna charge me the price with integrity you know like people don't know you yet but like once they kind of met you in person and they there's bigger report yeah well and just you know that face-to-face communication is a you know you're talking to someone and you can easily communicate they they listen to what you're you know you're struggling with or what you want to do and yeah yeah but you know Mm -hmm. of course if you want to scale your business yeah i gotta do online yeah Mm -hmm. like just in person stuff is just not gonna bring in more unless you hire like hundreds of salespeople to go and talk for you you know represent your company in all these multiple events um so it's you know would be more expensive i think and Mm -hmm. you know it's just but yeah so you know it's good to do both but like if 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 you want to um just get the things going you know the thing sometimes with those events is that it's free you know you mm-hmm. like the ads you have to pay for but so but you could start with like events networking which is less cost but it's yeah. it's your time so it yep. just depends what costs you more your time or to pay yeah. for the ad but you know? it's also you know you're there representing your business but you can also network with other businesses so maybe mm-hmm. you're looking it can f- be fun at yeah the same well it can time. be if you know it can be um you know making contacts just with um you know as a couple of weeks ago i um, you know, went out and had a bagel and coffee with another IT company um, in the area. And it was just, you know, it wasn't really, we didn't have any sort of business to pass between each other, but it was, you know, hey, what do you, what are you guys doing for this? Have you ever ran into this? Just, you know, forming kind of a relationship. And now after we were both like, huh, you know, this is, this is good. You know, now we kind of have someone that we can like, hey, maybe if you get into a little bit over your head with something, you need to pull in some extra people. Um, it's good to have those connections, but also just to talk about what has worked for you, what's worked for them and come to an, a commonality. Yeah, definitely networking yeah. with complementary or other businesses yeah. that maybe don't have the capacity to take all 
the all yeah. new clients, oh, the, and all the leads that yeah, they the, get. The one other thing that I wanted to talk about with the in-person networking was, you know, if as you, your business grows, you're going to need, you know, accountants, attorneys, you mm -hmm. know, a, a people to help you along the way. And that's also another nice way to, to meet some of those individuals too. Yeah. So um, as a business owner, you know, or mm -hmm. an employee or someone that you know, has to do marketing for a company. Um, those so far have been main avenue for us, you know, and right now, um, so we're debating, you know, when do we, do we want to do, have a table at the expos, you know, mm -hmm. and we are going to start with, like I said, some online ads, but I yeah. think soon we're going to do some tables. Like actually I'm going to an annual franchise expo mm -hmm. in phoenix in february very soon here and i i think for that one that's we'll more see. for like franchise owners right not it's so much for, for both, both. Oh, okay as well um and there will be s companies that will have um booths, booths cool. as well um it is a little bit more franchise or maybe oriented mm. but there mm -hmm. still be will be also s materials from yeah. pe franchisees not so much for people that don't have any franchises yet but already let's say because there are franchisees that actually are big corporations like franchisees that let's say own billions of dollars of a certain franchise yeah. or so yeah. there will be big big people like that there's for example lady that owns like a ton of kfc restaurants yeah. i know she'll be there you know I, actually it's funny you mentioned that there's this company called all-star pizza and they own pretty much all of the dominoes in maine vermont and new hampshire it's kind of interesting yeah. when i found that out i've heard actually um i'm trying to think what company it was mm. but i know that Recently, I read that they bought out their franchisee hmm. for billions of dollars. Um, it wasn't of Subway, was it? Me, um, not maybe. I'm not hmm. sure. But you know, sometimes. So, so you know, so this expo is for a little, a little bigger. Bit of both, yeah. yeah, it's not so much like the one that I went in July. That was June, New York City. That was more like for perspective franchisees yeah. but this was is like franchisors and franchisees that already probably have i mean no not to say that you can't go if you don't have right. you're still gonna learn a lot just being around these people oh my god you can would learn a ton you know if mm -hmm. you if you're thinking to franchise your business or you want to become a franchisee like i would say that's the place to be because mm -hmm. you're gonna mingle with these people that done it and yeah. who is better to learn than to be around people that is successful yeah. that has done that? Well, and, and, you know, I go to a lot of conferences more on the technology front, but that's where you can really get involved with, um, you know, people at a lot of these vendors that you work with directly. You can make contacts that help you, help you, which then helps your customer, especially if there's an issue. But also you can get some insider information about what's coming down the, the pipeline and, and the wire. And plus you can meet other customers and um, other people. And a lot of people at one time is, is not a necessarily a bad thing because everyone's in the same spot. And um, mm -hmm. of course there will be, you know, now that you mentioned, you know, that at the expos there are also vendors to that right. service those providers like the businesses that yeah. are showcasing their yeah services. like what what's that like team that connect business. that you guys uh, use? connect team connect team yeah or you know sometimes there's like payment processing companies yeah that go it's there you know too. it's people that have built their business around around that industry or around you know helping franchisees or people you know make a franchise yeah. kind of interesting but you know so i'm talking more the like okay the franchise expo mm -hmm. but i'm sure you, you know if you're listening whatever other industry you're in whether maybe it's jewelry yeah. you know there is jewelry expos yeah there's or arts yeah i was or looking, music um the other day it was I, I think they're called like the purple guys or the purple shirts or something like that and it's this 
IT franchise company that their their whole thing is that you know when they go on site they wear purple polo shirts it's kind of like oh like you know oh the, the purple people are here was it today. like the geek squads that they used to have uh, the geek squad color? they used to do like um they would show up as kind of like special agents was kind of their like thing black. yeah with like a tie and stuff like that mm -hmm. and you know and i just thought it was kind of interesting that you know part of their advertising is kind of you know this funny oh it's like oh the, the purple shirts are here today or you know the secret agents you know from best buy are here it's one of those kind of to go back to like what we were talking about with advertising is you know even you know when you're doing work it's at a customer site it could be advertising mm -hmm. you know oh yeah you should not miss that opportunity yeah, yeah so like t-shirts socks hats yeah. masks yeah scarves water bottles i have my brilliant um this one doesn't have anything on it mm. but i have this one it actually used to be a uh, different color <laughs> now yeah. it's just yeah but um don't lose that option yeah and the one thing that i will say is you know a friend of mine said you know if you care about your brand you care you care about your merchandise that opportunity so, yeah, yeah so but you know the one thing is logo. you know a lot of times i'll get you know f merchandise from a vendor or something and you know like i appreciate it but i'm like you know this is like a you know a backpack that's gonna last like three times going to the gym or something like that so you know what i've done with some merchandise is get high quality merchandise that's obvious it's going to be more expensive so you don't want to just give it out to everybody but be a little bit more selective of who you give it out to and when you're chit-chatting with people and maybe you learn like hey like you know they really like to go to the gym or you know or, or whatever it's like oh hey well you know let, let me let me get let me get your card at you know i've got a really nice backpack you know that i want to send you that hey it's yeah it's got our company logo on it but then it kind of gets you in a little bit more into the door to be able to you know hey let Everyone me drop it off likes yeah. free stuff yeah but free, nobody I, likes crappy trinkets yeah. that they have to throw i think away. that's the biggest thing is you know a lot of times you know, vendors will have these tables and like, oh, come on up and grab some stuff. Like, I'm like 50 crappy items that you have yeah. nothing to do. I mean, do sometimes, for. you know, like pens and stuff like that. It's like, oh, I, I feel like I always okay. need pens. But, you know, sometimes I'm like, uh, I mean, what yeah, do maybe. I need this like uh, well, uh, thing that Sometimes I I'm like, oh, I'll grab a couple of things and, um, you know, because I know like my, uh, you know, my nephews will like them, but like. <laughs> Or like That's this, okay, really, like yeah. I only need so many stress balls. Right, things, yeah. You know, or but like if it's, these bad you know, holders. I can't remember what the name of the company was, but it was a technology company and it was like a really nice, like high quality gym bag that, that you know, had their logo embroidered on it. And I was like, wow, this thing is really nice, you know, and I, and I ended up using it a lot. And I remember I would go to the gym and people are like, huh, like, like that's a really nice bag and i was like oh yeah actually such and such vendor technology vendor you know hook me up with Well, it. you gotta be at a certain level though to be able to give out you know well I th they were very selective lot. of yeah, who they but, gave it but out but then to. you also yeah. gotta have lower value right. items so because volume also is important right. you know you, if you only give it five that's not gonna be much you know mm -hmm. But you want to also have, like, just because it's lower cost doesn't mean it has to be crappy. For example, we have uh, stickers, you know, yeah. they're reflective. And I think they're nice. They serve yeah. a purpose, you know, you can put them on your helmet or your bicycle. So they're yeah. like safety feature, but they don't cost much. Yeah. I mean, I remember someone, it was one vendor, was trying to hand out, like, these wooden keychain things and i was kind of like oh, okay like thanks i'm not really sure what i'm gonna do with this but you know okay. yeah. yeah but i guess you know one man's trash is other man's treasure yeah so i mean maybe you know i think there's something too of just that like that stuff. you know giving out cheap stuff that just kind of gets the brand out there too you know it, brand recognition is a good pens good, and cups yeah they're okay yeah um yeah so 
we talked about a um, couple avenues of marketing, you know, mm -hmm. and like I said, like, you know, there's also like printed options like mm -hmm. newspapers. Of course, it's or like local magazines. It's much harder to track the conversion rate on those unless you put some sort of coupon in it or let's say like radio ads you know right. unless you say please mention you found us through this mm -hmm. you know those are more difficult to track than let's say in person connection you should, or uh, google facebook you should ad. mention the the um customer that brought in the flyer from like six years ago yeah that <laughs> happened someone brought in a coupon from like 2007 six, yeah and, <laughs> and in i was 2024. like 2024 yeah just the fact that they had held on to that thing for six or seven years it would be like all right <laughs> like maybe a free treatment or something <laughs> maybe not a free yeah. treatment but give you the discount right um yeah so it's you know that those are optional too and it mm. might work for certain industries more than others but i wouldn't be spending a ton of money on those at uh, first you know you mm. can uh, those i see those more as the brand um recognition recognition just getting the brand out there as as like no what's the word i'm looking for like um yeah, I guess branding, like recognition, yeah. not so much. I don't look at those not so much as an ad to have instant yeah. conversion, which might happen. Right. But more like the more places people see you, right. the more in their head you get stuck. You yeah. Know? The one thing that I will mention is I don't remember the station here, but there is a very popular radio station like in Vermont. 95.5 triple no, X. No, I think it's it's one of kind of like it's I, I don't remember. But the, the reason why them bringing them up is that they are very well known to be playing just kind of like in office settings. So like, you know, what we usually call like cube land where you go in and it's just a bunch of cubes and a lot of businesses or because when I was going into businesses for IT work, it was, you know, playing the same radio station. And one of the radio stations things was like, oh, advertise with us because we're mm -hmm. on air in all of these, you know, office buildings and, um, you know, you should look it up. Which one? I is. can't remember what it was, but, you know, it was a very specific use of like, you know, broadcast radio, which I thought was maybe kind of interesting. NPR, uh, maybe it was VPR or, uh, I don't, you know, I'll have to look it up the next time. But, you know, you go into a lot of office buildings and, you know, they just kind of have the radio playing in the background, which might, you know, be helpful for brand recognition. Or if you're targeting a certain demographic, that might be an interesting play as well mm -hmm. yep so um and certain you know radio stations when they try to like sell you ads they will have you mm -hmm. know this is our demographics right. this is where we play you know so you can you know always look at that stuff the same with magazines let's say we have like distribution yeah like yeah. burlington magazine like um maturity magazine that's more targeted like to, towards older people then you know there's like magazines that are maybe in co college magazines yeah. Not like in sure. yeah in vermont like the, I, I th i'm pretty sure it's called the cynic it's is the one that is like the uvm newspaper so it's like you know kind of trying to if you're trying to target that audience and then the more popular one just for the area is seven days which is you know the paper that most people not so much targeted as the mm -hmm. cynic yeah. yeah so um so you know you got digital you got in person and you got printed and audio and mm -hmm. you know audio and then you have you can do um podcasts and youtube i mean yep. these word of mouth referrals. yeah yeah of course doing great job and then maybe giving a little gift to incentive to your clients so they refer you other customers you know yeah. give them little card where they will get discount on their next service mm -hmm. if they refer their friend and their friend maybe get a discount on the first service so mm -hmm. those help as well 
Um, so there's different options right there. Um, maybe you want to post in the comments down below which one work the best works yeah, the best for, for your, your business. business. Yeah. Interested to hear. And I'd be interested to hear too, like in um, you know, f people listening from different areas. What's the most popular kind of method in your area? Yeah, I mean these days. Yeah. Of course, I think online. like online yeah. definitely is the most. Uh, like tested and mm -hmm. you know and and one of the popular ways but but um but be besides that you know there there's another many other ideas um and ways to do i mean even tv ads you know there are people that yeah. still do and maybe we should maybe we might do some tv ads yeah. i know one of my real estate friends said that he'll be doing um, TV ads soon mm, because yeah. not many people do them right now. Yeah. Because it kind of fell out of favor, you know? Yeah, I think with a lot of people either, you know, cutting the cord and maybe not having normal TV I don't anymore. Have, I don't have But it. I think, you know, if you're targeting a certain demographic, yeah. that demographic might hang out watching TV, you know? Exactly. Or they yeah. might hang out on LinkedIn, you know, or they might hang out on Facebook or TikTok or, or whatever. And it's like finding what that target is and then figuring out where they hang out. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that I was just thinking of is, you know, like sponsorships too of, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. of maybe sponsoring an event. The 5K. Or, yeah. Or, you know, something like, you know, sponsoring like a kid's baseball team, yeah. you know, because, you know, a lot of, people go to those events to watch their kids play and it's that brand recognition or just being like, oh, hey, yeah, I've heard of those guys. And the reason that I've heard of them is they sponsor a baseball team, yeah. you know, like that's kind of cool, you know? Yeah, that shows that your company yeah. cares about yeah, the that kids you're, yeah, or and the future. That you're trying to, you know, put some money or your profits back into, back the, into community. the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think we're going to wrap up for today mm -hmm. yep. unless you have something else to add. No, I think, you know, I, I'm just interested to hear what other people are doing. What what works in your area? Yeah. For advertising. I think that would yeah. be interesting. Please add some additional yeah. suggestions, ideas that we haven't covered. And maybe we'll talk more about that in the next episode. Mm -hmm. Um, the same, I hope you all stay healthy yep. and avoid catching a flu, which yeah. I haven't had had one like I, I think it's since high school. And yeah. that's for I forgot how like yeah. terrible it can be. Oh, my God. I'm going to like double washing my hands yeah. now <laughs> moving forward. Yeah. And the other thing I have been So, yeah. you know, I think that's why I'm more prone. I've been more prone catching some like colds and things in the past couple a year because yeah. I have to take that thing on and off. And sometimes like I'm not super diligent. Yeah. It's like when you're in a rush and you like, especially at the restaurant, you know, you might not always like yeah. be able to wash it as good before you put it on. Well, and just, and you off. know, even if you wash your hands really good, you know, you, you might, st might miss something. Someone on might your walk hand by or, and yeah, like, you know, breathe on your, <laughs> your wound. yeah, you know, we can, you can only do what yeah. you can do and trying to be as, you know, washing your hands yeah. and, you know, trying to minimize contact with things. Cause other than that, I do. used to never get sick, but once I got this Invisalign, I think I got sick now yeah. twice. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, I only got like three months left. So hopefully no more <laughs> sick until then. Well, until as I'm it gets, you know, this. things warm up too, you yeah. know, people will be getting outside more yeah. and, keep and get the windows open yeah. get some fresh air so. take multivitamins too vitamin c my vitamin d3 make sure your vitamin yeah. d levels are up. and double check what if you're taking a multivitamin there's no dyes or anything in it too i was i was noticing on some multivitamins they have dyes yeah and but the phyto multi yeah. is the best one yeah. Yep. I think so far that I found yep. so all natural stuff there yep. but it's good to check those labels yep. yeah great well I think what we'll do is we'll have our uh, studio audience <laughs> so alright folks till next time